speed. We have projects now that are spanning the globe in Japan, in Europe, in San Diego, we're shooting in Savannah. From Savannah, we go to Cartagena. From Cartagena, we go to Budapest. So we have productions in each one of those places. So we have to collaborate with everybody every day to make sure everybody's on the same page. So communication is the key to our business. If I'm looking at a drawing or I'm looking at a location or I'm looking at a design of something, I can communicate with the person on the spot. I can talk to the production designer. I can talk to the art director. I can talk to the editor if he's showing me something. That's important. Emails don't work for me that way. I communicate in real time. I can see what they're showing me, what they're talking about. I can make corrections, which can save me a fortune. The technology that is in my hands right now is what makes us so successful. Communication with a voice and an image, for me, is gold. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that amazing video on our collaboration technology. I'm Aruna Ravichandran, Vice President of Marketing for Cisco in the Collaboration Technology Group. I am delighted to host this wonderful panel with an esteemed set of members on the team over here. Uh, I'll start with our first panel member, Vasili Tryan. Vasili is the VP and GM for our contact center, our customer journey solutions, part of Cisco. He's been in the industry in the telecommunication space for over 20 plus years. And before coming to Cisco, he used to be the CEO for a cloud-based contact center company called Serenova based out of Austin, Texas. The next member of this particular panel is an esteemed customer. He is the CIO for Cigna. Cigna is a privately held, one of the largest real estate companies here within the European region. And France is the CIO leading the digital transformation journey across the board within the Cigna. Another customer has also joined us. So here I have on the table is Thomas Lau. Thomas Lau is the video engineering leader for Bookings.com. So Bookings.com is an online accommodation company. It's, it started as a small private startup in 1996 in Amsterdam and now it's a part of the larger Bookings.com company. They have 17,000 employees with a very large global scale, and Thomas Law was responsible for deploying contact center across the board into multiple different geographies at Bookings.com. And our last speaker is Sri Srinivasan. Sri Srinivasan is our senior vice president and general manager for WebEx teams, meetings, and devices. He also has responsibilities for our on-premise as well as our hybrid part of our collaboration tools. Sri is a legendary leader who is basically transforming the collaboration landscape by bringing in new innovation technologies into the collaboration canvas. He's got several decades of experience in the collaboration market. Before coming to Cisco, he spent a good amount of years at Microsoft as the general manager for Dynamic 65 part of the business, which was a part of the Cloud Assure group. That is the panel set of members we have over here. And our conversation today is going to be on the topic of workplace transformation. So with that, I first want to be able to give you a little bit of color. So there are multiple different trends which are happening in the market today. So I want to talk about four key trends in the workforce transformation place, but primarily focused on these trends specific to the European market. One of the first trends when you think about workplace transformation, it's about where you work actually becomes irrelevant. What do I mean by that? It means that it's about being able to support a global employee workforce, whether it's your customer or your partners, so that they can work remotely anywhere, anytime, on any mobile device. And so today, 19% of the workforce are remote workers. 
And if you fast forward and look at it in, twin, in, in the next three years, this number is actually going to be doubled, which means that the underlying collaboration technology needs to be able to provide the same seamless experience across the board, regardless of the fact whether you work out of your home, you work on your mobile device, you're working in a coffee shop, or you're working in the office. It's all about the same, providing the same experience. The second trend is that AI is no longer a buzzword. So if you think about artificial intelligence, more and more of the collaboration technology is going to get much more smarter because it becomes an important aspect of making teams work together much more efficiently. So if you look at one of the other stats which we uncovered, 53% of organizations say that smart meeting rooms are extremely central in terms of being able to improve their business processes. And 40% of the meetings which are now going to be facilitated are actually going to be virtual assistant enabled. What do I mean by that? Being able to collaborate with your coworkers, with your employees, with your customers, needs to be table stakes. Joining a meeting should be a table stakes experience. What I mean by that is being able to push one button and join a meeting is not just good enough. AI technology is going to automate the entire transformation in the, in the workplace where you join a meeting by going into a room, the room will automatically recognize who you are, it'll tell you that you have a meeting coming up, and with one button, you automatically join the meeting experience, right? So the technology becomes much more smarter. Another big key trend is about customer experience. So we have heard about the word customer experience, and we experience that in every aspect within our lives. And so 25% of customers will actually abandon an online engagement if they don't have a good user experience. But if you look at 2020, that perception is going to have a major impact because it's not, people are not going to make buying decisions based upon the product or the price. They're going to make a buying decision based upon the actual experience they get when they actually go to buy the product. And the last trend is extremely important across the board because while these collaboration technologies is going to enable a lot of digital transformations across the market in terms of being able to help people to work collaboratively together, security and compliance becomes a very important trend across the board. So 68% of the leaders are extending their collaboration technologies in order to talk to external parties, which means that they cannot compromise the data. Whether you share your files or your data or you're hosting a meeting, all of that information needs to be extremely secure. And 50% of users are provided with mobile devices which are invisible to IT. And this in turn actually has a big impact across the board within the market. And we also know that there is a rising cost with respect to the number of data breaches which are happening in the market today. So I want to basically set the tone and talk about these four trends and start facilitating a discussion with my esteemed set of panel attendees over here. So first, let's start with you, Franz. Right? So if you think about all of these trends which I shared with you, can you give me your perspective on what customer service actually means for you in terms of your transformation journey at Cigna? Okay. Thanks for the question. Hello and servus to Barcelona. Cigna is a very fast-growing company. Over the last 15 years, we grow from three people up to 400 people now in real estate and about 40,000 people in their retail. Well, video conferencing and collaboration is a key factor for our success because we have eight offices across Europe. And the people work in these offices together, they need to work together across these locations. We built together with Cisco a great stress-free collaboration ecosystem. Now we extend these systems with this WebEx teams and this great WebEx board. This enables our employees to work anywhere, anytime, and on any device. But I think this is, the journey is still going on. I think the next big thing is AI and some of this uh, support thing in collaboration. Yeah? 
So Thomas Law, right? So well, you and I have had a lot of conversations about your contact center deployment. You know, talk to me about AI in terms of how the contact center market is actually innovating in the world of AI. Thank you for the questions. Hello, everyone. AI is like a favorite topic for me. I think it's already impacting every part of our lives. Yesterday, I was going from the venue in taxi, and the taxi driver was just saying address to his mobile phone. He was not typing. So this is a very simple example where AI is already removing friction, right? It isn't too hard to imagine that a few years down the line, we will order Uber or taxi, and it's possible that it's going to be without driver there, right? So when we look for our contact center, I think there is a huge opportunity here. We are a fast-growing company, Booking.com. We have a huge amount of agents, and our business is growing very fast. And there was some prediction that in a few years, we would have to have customer service of the size of the city of Amsterdam, and that is very hard to do. So what we have to do is to help our customers and help our agents to serve everyone better to increase customer satisfaction, because customer satisfaction is ultimately one of the main goals why we do our stuff, customer first, right? How can we do this? Basically, we need to automate stuff that can be automated when customer calls. If customer calls to cancel a reservation or some simple stuff, right, it would be great for customer if we can do that automatically with the bots that talk to them. That way, we can save agents for the situation where they really need help. They really need some human hand to help them in the middle of the night when the hotel sold their room and they don't have anywhere to stay with, the, with their family. In the same time, for our agents, we want to help them and improve their conversation and how, to, how they serve our customers. And AI can play a huge role here by giving them tips, knowledge sharing, understanding emotions around it, and so on. Great, so picking back on the question and the answers he had, you know, as customers and uh, people's experiences and preferences are changing, how do you think that is actually having an impact in the contact center market? That's a good question, Aruna. The contact center market shifting dramatically, a lot due to social media, because what it used to happen prior to things like Twitter and Facebook was very few people had a voice. And now with you know, the advent of social media and all these channels, every person has a voice and people expect to be heard regardless of their communication medium. And so what used to be driven by businesses to push you down certain avenues which become your main communication point with your, with your customers, whether that's voice or email, now the customers expect you to communicate with them whenever and however they want, whether that's chat, email, Twitter, Facebook, WeChat, WhatsApp, it doesn't matter. They want to be able to communicate you across a broad spectrum of demographics. So you have everything from 80-year-olds wanting to communicate via email to people like my children who don't even know what a phone call is. And so the contact center and customer service has had to adapt that and is evolving into dealing with consumers at the level that they want, giving very personalized experiences. And it's a challenge in the market today. Shri, you know, when we were talking about all of the four trends, what role, you know, pick any trend. I actually think this applies to all four trends. In your mind, what role do you think personalization actually has to play in any one of the trends, you know, in terms of making work irrelevant, where you work irrelevant, not work irrelevant, but where you work irrelevant? So uh, let's, Aruna, I think your trends were spot on. The modern workplace, as we know it, over the continuum of time has been transforming at a rapid pace, right? So if you look at what's happening today, uh, if, you, if you go back to your first trend, it's a global workforce. It's a global market. For you at Booking.com, I don't think you think about it as just in Europe. You think of uh, business as a global canvas. So in a sense, what, what's happening is a global workforce is coming together and agility is a key word these days. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, you've got a set of knowledge workers to Vasily's point of you know, a segment of our population understanding males and a segment of a population looking at a film strip and saying, what is this? This looks cool. So that's the kids' generation. So you've got a, a, a wide spectrum of generations. 
they all have personal choices. We as humans are wired to be our own way. We, have, we make personal choices. And that personal choice, thanks to technology, is entering the enterprise workforce. Mm -hmm. So personalized collaboration for me is personal choice for end users with a rich set of controls for IT. And that's what we stand for at Cisco. Personalized choice for end users, controls from IT. So Franz, I know that you have Cisco WebEx teams you know, deployed within your organization, but I also, you have shared with me that there has been a set of pain points. You guys actually had to go through a journey in order to basically get over the pain points. What were some of the pain points you had? And what's your journey been? And how has Cisco WebEx teams actually helped you in your journey? Okay, thank you. As I mentioned before, we have a great stress-free ecosystem from Cisco with video conferencing and so on. For a couple of years, there was a missing link for us, and this was the mobile devices. People use WhatsApp, FaceTime, and Skype on the iPhone. With WebEx Teams, Cisco closed this gap, and now these tools, WebEx, video conferencing, uh, WebEx Teams, works together. But then the next pain point was how to bring these great tools to our employees. We create together with a company from Austria, with Frink. It's a, a partner from Cisco. We, have a, we, we, we make a complete new strategy for communication, onboarding, acquisition, coaching and training based on user roles and based on their needs. And it works. We go out with this new concept and the employees get really happy about this. Yeah? Real estate business is a people business and with this strategy we address this in a perfect way. Going back to you, Thomas Law, um, what kind of ROI do you think Bookings.com has actually had with the contact center implementation? I think when you think about contact center, we realize that it's enabling us to do our business. It's not a cost center, it's profit center for us, right? Although you will not hear our agents actually selling you booking while, while you call them. So that's not what I mean, meant by profit center. We understand that if you are a happy customer, you are going to come back to us. And that is why it's really, really important for us. I don't want to talk about like specific numbers, but I'll just put one. Basically, we created a team of tech, like developers, data scientists, engineers, uh, product owners and stuff, like more than 200 people are working in Booking.com on improving solutions for our customers, for our partners, and for our agents. That shows you that we see huge return of investment here because this is core of our business. So, so coming back to you over here, is that is calling a contact center getting obsolete? If yes, why? If not, why? They're both wise, okay. Yep. Um, I first want to add something uh, onto what Tomislav said. The, the trend that Tomislav's speaking about, about moving from a cost center to a profit center is a trend shifting within the customer service and the customer experience industry. It's one that people talk about, but a lot of companies don't implement. Realizing that the cost of transaction of any customer service interaction isn't the primary driver, rather than looking at what the lifetime value is of a customer. And what you're doing at Booking.com is, is just that. It's focusing on how many bookings you're going to make as a customer over your life rather than just that one transaction. And that's a key point because a lot of people talk about it. Shifting your business, driving that process change is a big effort. That's a journey in and of itself. Speaking on the voice thing, I remember back in, uh, I think it was probably 2001, the analyst came out and said, uh, voice is going to disappear. Voice transactions are going to decline, web chat's going to take over. And then a few years went by and voice transactions kept climbing and web chat kept climbing and then a new curve was created. It said, in the next five years, voice transactions are going to decline and web chat is going to take over. And then in about 2013, 2014, the analyst came and said, voice transactions are going to decline and social media is going to take over. What's actually happening is all mediums of communication within customer service are on the rise. 
What's changed is that instead of customers communicating on a single channel, it's not voice or chat or email or social, they're communicating in multiple mediums at the same time for a single interaction. So instead of just being a voice call, you may start out with a chat. Actually, you may start out with a Facebook post or Twitter and say, I'm really frustrated. Then you may pop a chat in and realize you can't solve your problem via a textual channel like chat. And then you're gonna pivot and make a voice communication. So you've done three or four different interactions for one customer service interaction, whereas in previous life, you would just do one thing. That has shifted dramatically in the customer service world. So voice is still increasing. Anybody that tells you different is absolutely wrong, and all the statistics are there. What you have to think about is instead of picking what channel you want your customers to communicate you on, is you need technologies that can assimilate all these different points of communication. Voice, chat, email, social. Um, you start thinking about emerging channels like WhatsApp, WeChat, Viber, and then there's things like my kids are using today, I don't even know what these things are, but there's other textual channels that they're communicating on because they think that we're old people and old people stay on Facebook and Twitter and we're gonna focus on these new things. But that next generation is gonna use a different mechanism of channels, right? Listen to everything and then you decide as a business how you wanna to respond to your customers. And that's how the customer experience game is changing and, and voice is still that interaction that's rising, it's core part of any customer service interaction today. Shri, you know, we recently launched huddle space solutions into the market. Um, you know, there are a zillion huddle spaces today, but we did a, a research through, we sponsored a research through dimensional search research, and we found that most of the huddle spaces which are deployed in the market have little to zero collaboration technology deployed. How do you see the innovation happening in the huddle space market? So let's talk about the problem itself, right? So huddling is a very natural human act. It's the act of just sitting around a laptop and ideating, getting near a water cooler, putting a paper napkin together and writing down your ideas and thoughts. That very human act of on an ad hoc basis getting together is the act of huddling. Now, with a global workforce, with a global workforce driving innovation and teams coming together, it's only natural that the huddle space needs to become digital. And like Vasily described, there's the mediums of communication are reinventing themselves. There's new forms of it coming. Video is a big one. Now in a global workforce, video becomes extremely critical. Now one of the problems is video is not as democratic as audio has been, mm -hmm. or as uh, even messaging, instant messaging has been. So in a sense, the opportunity in front of us and what Cisco has to offer is simple, intuitive, personalized huddle space experiences across the landscape of the market. So in a sense, the challenges that exist in the market today are hacked up solutions that have not scaled across the enterprise. Things like Zoom rooms that have multiple management interfaces, multiple vendors underneath it. You know, obviously when you have, you know, uh, the management term for it is, um, you know, bring your own device type thing, but in a sense it doesn't work. When something fails, each management vendor will tell you it's not my problem, you know, talk to Zoom. So in a sense it, it becomes very hard to scale within an enterprise. And it's wire palooza applying it across not only the huddle space, but into the regular meeting room, uh, there is an inconsistency. There's a large inconsistency out there. So that's pretty much the problem space we're dealing with. And you know, for all of you guys' audience, this is a plug. We have a lot of huddle spaces for you guys to actually experience the collaboration technology all over the showcase over here. So one more question for you, Franz, is that as you onboarded, new, all of your employees on WebEx teams. Can you talk to us about the experience they had? Because you know, you, you had a lot of pain points and you got a lot of new folks onto WebEx teams. Talk to us about the experience they had from an onboarding perspective. One of the reactions in the onboarding process was, wow, yeah, you have so great tools here in Signa and it's so easy to work together and 
this is this wow effect yeah? we, we use and, and try to, to bring all over the company with other uh, training and, and, and collaboration matters. Yeah? But it's the wow that we create on the onboarding that we say, look at these tools, use it. It's simple, it's easy, do it. And it has the ability to work with all of your existing ecosystem, right? So right. that was one of the underlying pain points. Right. So Thomas Love, another question for you. Uh, how have you improved the work environment for your contact center agents? Uh, that's a very good question. I think what we strive to is remove friction from lives of our contact center agents. If you remove friction, you will make their life easier. And their life is not easy. Being contact center agent, if anyone tried to do that, that is not easy life. So we really try to do everything that we can to simplify their life, to integrate different tools. And that is why we like Cisco, because Cisco has API first philosophy now. So we really love that we can customize stuff and integrate it. So for example, our agent have agent desktop that is integrated in CRM. It's not native GUI. Basically, we customized and we did something for ourselves. These are examples where, because we realize, right, if you tap between different windows and so on, you are going to waste time. And it's not going to be easy for agents to do this. But if you integrate everything and make it seamless, frictionless, that is where the win is. And that is what we are focusing on in, at Booking.com. Because if our agents are able to do this, then they are going to serve customer in a better way. And that's going to be a win for us. So Vasili, you know, speaking about bookings.com as an example, you know, like customers like bookings.com, why do you think data is a key part of the contact center experience? What shifted in the contact center is instead of applying rules and, and logic to the mass and just routing transactions, we now can leverage data and adding on top of things like artificial intelligence and machine learning technologies to leverage that data to provide those personalized experiences like what Shri said. So instead of putting people into groups like gold, platinum, and silver, you can now say Vasily Tryant or Aruna, and I want to give them a specific experience about the data that we've accumulated. So we can see things like half abandoned shopping carts, time you spent on a tech support page, how many times you've called in prior, are you on a flight that is, is leaving shortly and the plane inbound is delayed? And you can take all this data bring it together and then make real-time decisions within your technology about how you want to shift that interaction. And so if you think about when you make touch with the contact center, what's the first thing they say? Hi, how are you? Can I get your customer number? Can I get your account number? And you're providing them the information when the reality is we already have this data. We just have to take that data and bring it to the surface and we can make it a personalized experience. We could already see that I have bought 10 products that I'm having trouble on a tech support uh, page trying to find a, an answer to a problem that is known. Bring that information to the front and all that data is going to allow that customer experience to totally change. So as you go back to what Tomislav said about removing friction, remove all those easy things up front. Do some of those simple things and it will make your customers' lives easier. And think about it this way. If a business had some of the data that you had in your head about your own experiences, how would it change your customer experience with the brands that you deal with? Don't overthink it. It's actually a really simple problem. Personalize it in your own life, and that's how we can change customer experience, leveraging all this data, which is public, which is out there. So the last question is for you, Shrey. You know, instead of asking you another question, I think this audience would like to get a preview on all of the innovations we talked about, right? So AI, personalization, being able to showcase, the power of making it happen. Okay. Will you be able to demonstrate for us? Absolutely. Are you guys ready to see some uh, action here? Yeah. Yes. Okay, let's go do that. So, now I want to uh, preface by saying I'm not going to show you the same stuff. You've all seen WebEx before. This is an opportunity for us to showcase some really cool technology is that we are exposing for the first time ever. So it's not just the normal WebEx canvas. So we'll start there, right? So obviously you guys know the beautiful green button called um, for WebEx. To start a meeting, you don't have to enter any phone numbers or dial 
uh, codes, uh, you, all you have to do is hit the start button. So I'm going to start a meeting. And in a sense, what you're going to do is go into one of the new mediums of communication, which is, I'm going to skip the, the join part, which is video. So in a sense, you will see active video as pretty much the first screen. So now, oftentimes, we enter a meeting. We want to know who all are there. Do you guys have that feeling? Who's there? Who's not there? Who hasn't joined? Uh, so it's, it's a simple click. You can look at it in video layout terms. A five by five view of first class video showing you who's there in, in the meeting. So it shows you some names. Certain people have chosen to hide their video. Uh, that's, that's quite common, right? How many of us put cello tape on top of the, the laptop? It's, it's normal, right? So the next human activity that happens is you want to figure out who's in the meeting, why are they there. Don't you have that viewpoint? It's a 30-minute meeting, 8 to 10 people show up, and the first 12 minutes is spent introducing each other. And then before you know it, the meeting is done. What if you had a hover over that allowed you to find out more about the people in the meeting? What if you figured out where they were in the org chart within your internal, internal organization? In this particular case, we figured out that Amy's worked in Cisco. She's worked, worked through the different ranks. Uh, we know about the company. We know exactly what all she's done. You know, if she had more social profile information, you would see it. So in a sense, what we are enabling is making the meeting personal, making the meeting that much more effective so that the introductions can be passed by and we can get on with the act of actually working. Now, we don't stop there. So another part of personalized co collaboration is bringing data silos together. Integrated systems are super important for technology to fade away in the background. So let me show you the next piece of innovation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this meeting and bring up beautiful WebEx teams that Franz talks about. Now, we've had Cisco file storage backing up WebEx teams. We all know a number of you are using Microsoft Office. How many of you are using Microsoft Office 365 or Office? There you go. We want to make your lives better. We want to take that drab screen around Word, PowerPoint, and Excel and give it some life. So let, let's show you some of that. So first thing is, when you click this attachment, you can upload straight from OneDrive. You don't need our file systems anymore. So you can pick a document from here and upload. So I'm not going to upload this document. I've already uploaded a document. So this document is in OneDrive. So I click on it. And what happens is, within WebEx Teams, we are loading Word. So you can see that it's co-editing. So I can see Lewis Pratt is editing away. I'm not doing anything. You can see Lewis is already there. He's talking about building bridges. He's talking about Cisco as that experience per where. So you, you pretty much get integrated interop from us. We're building bridges to every other ecosystem out there. Our promise of uninterrupted work streams to our end users is part of personalized collaboration. Now, it doesn't stop there. We talked a lot about huddle spaces, right? No conversation is complete if we don't talk about huddle spaces. So we're going to join another meeting from WebEx Teams, this, in this case, same green button. And I'm going to make it full screen. So say hi to our amazing team in Oslo. So these are team members from Oslo. You, want to go, you guys want to say hi? Espen, Anne-Marie, and Tariq? Yes, sure. So hi, Shree and everyone in Barcelona. Great to see you guys. 
Uh, we're joining you from Oslo here, huddled in a small room, and we're using the brand new room kit mini. It's designed for uh, rooms up to five people, so you can kind of think of it as a room kit, but smaller. And this is a single screen system where people can sit very close to the screen. Uh, the room kit mini has an extreme wide angle camera with 120 degrees field of view. And we can actually sit so close that we can touch the camera. Uh, with this extreme camera uh, view, we need to use the powerful RoomKit uh, hardware to straighten out the fisheye effect. So I can quickly demonstrate this by turning off the compensation that we're doing. So this is the raw camera feed, and you can see all the bent lines and curved edges of the image. So hold on, guys. This is what you get from your competition, from our competition. You want really good video. Espen, take it away. What, what do you yeah. have to fix so, this? I mean, Thanks to Clever Engineering here in Oslo, we can basically use the hardware and software in the endpoint and correct the image to give a much, much better experience than, uh, than the raw camera feed. And like with the rest of the portfolio, the camera is fully automatic using the best view, so we don't have to worry about camera control. And like probably most of you guys have noticed as well, we have our name tags popping up here. So throughout the whole room portfolio, we can support those cool uh, new AI features. We can also just quickly turn on diagnostic mode as well. And uh, so you can see uh, what's happening under the hood here. So we have our, uh, uh, our face recognition uh, uh, squares on our faces. What you see here in the gray square, that is what we're sending out to the far end. And we, of course, see people count up there in the corner as well. So we can count the number of people in a room. Yeah. Uh, to ensure an easy and flexible installation, the RoomCut Mini can be mounted either above or below the screen. Uh, it's a complete system. It's built-in speakers and uh, microphones. Everything is in one uh, unit. It's a touch display. Uh, and, of course, it can be uh, used both on-premise and cloud-based. Wow. I guess that's what we have planned to show you today uh, for now. So thank you guys. A big round of applause for our Oslo team, if you would. And a, f a few things to keep in mind. This device is about $2,200 uh, after discounts with the Touch 10, with the, with the control. It's voice enabled. And most importantly, I talked about personalized experience. Two parts of it, right? It's voice enabled. You can, it understands people. Very soon, people profiles are going to start to show up in the RoomKit Mini. Same manageability experience as the rest of our portfolio. Whether you are on a Room Series, Room 55, Room 70 Dual, exact same rich IT controls. It doesn't matter whether you're on the RoomKit Mini which is this device that these guys are on, you get the absolute same experience. You got the share, the lower end. So our viewpoint is we are democratizing and bringing personalized experiences to every facet of the workforce. And by the way, Tariq, if you want to win that game, knight to e6. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. The power of video. You can help him win. Thank you. Very much. So I hope you guys enjoyed this innovation showcase around the work-based transformation. Thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, we're going to stay here for a couple of minute, more minutes before the next session starts. Feel free to come down and chat with us, and we are here to happy answer any questions you guys might have. Thank you very much and hope you enjoy the rest of the show.